I'm pleased to congratulate Dr. Hartle on having the best uh, paper in spine and peripheral nerves of the year. The paper is entitled uh, Lumbar Spinal Stenosis Associated with Degenerative Lumbar Spondylosis, Spondylolisthesis, a Systematic Review and Meta-Analysis of Secondary Fusion Rates Following Open Versus Minimally Invasive Decompression. That's our hurdle. Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great honor to accept this uh, uh, award in on behalf of our, our group at Wild Cornell. So I want to talk to you about a, a problem that is very common among uh, spine surgeons, a decision-making uh, problem. How do you treat patients with lumbar spinal stenosis and degenerative spondylolisthesis? And this is a good example. Uh, this is a patient who presents with uh, severe lumbar stenosis, back pain. And if you look at the literature and uh, really the surgical practice, not only here but really worldwide, generally there is a, uh, a wide consensus that a lot of these patients should probably be treated with fusion. This has been written in various guidelines and so forth. Now, uh, with the, uh, uh, and, and the concern is obviously if you do a decompressive uh, laminectomy here, uh, that this may lead to a progression of the slip, instability, more pain, more symptoms uh, that may eventually require a fusion operation. Now, the question is, if you are able to perform an effective uh, decompression through a less invasive approach by preserving a, lo a lot of the anatomical structures, are you able to do a decompression without having to do a fusion? Now, in, in our practice, we've been doing this for a number of years now where we use uh, tubular retractors to do an over-the-top uh, decompression, uh, preserve a lot of the stability of the spine, and in selected patients, therefore, are able to offer them a decompression without a fusion. We wrote up our experience a number of years ago with our fellows and residents here uh, in patients with and without spondylolisthesis, and we followed these patients up, and we found that it didn't really matter whether these patients had uh, spondylolisthesis. A lot of these patients seemed to be very, doing very well with the decompression without fusion. So we, we, um, uh, based on this uh, study, we uh, concluded that a routine fusion was probably not necessary if you do this with uh, less invasive uh, decompression technology. So this prompted then this, uh, uh, this review of the literature and meta-analysis that uh, Carsten Scholler did uh, together with uh, some of our residents and fellows here where we compared patients who underwent different types of decompressive procedures for lumbar stenosis and spondylolisthesis. Um, we included patients who had uh, uh, lumbar spondylolisthesis and significant stenosis who required surgical decompression, either via an open laminectomy or a tubular or specular over-the-top over the uh, minimal invasive decompression. And we looked then at secondary fusion rates, so those patients who had to come back later on for a fusion operation because they uh, developed uh, instability and mechanical problems. Uh, we looked at overall reoperation rate uh, in these patients, and we looked at postoperative progression of slippage and patient uh, satisfaction in these patients. Uh, we included um, the primary outcome was secondary fusion rate, as, as, as mentioned. That was defined you know, by patients coming back with mechanical instability uh, needing uh, more uh, fusion surgery. Uh, we included a, a total of 1,156 patients. 19 studies uh, described open laminectomy in patients with lumbar stenosis and spondylolisthesis. 18 studies uh, de de uh, described a type of minimal invasive, and that was in general either a specular or a tubular approach for a unilateral approach for bilateral decompression. Uh, this is how we uh, do this in our practice, and uh, the majority of the studies that we included uh, used a similar uh, surgical technique. Uh, so this is at L4-5, where you have a patient with uh, significant lumbar spinal stenosis, and you uh, uh, come in through a unilateral approach. Uh, you undercut the spinous process, expose the ligamentum flavum, remove that, and then the key is really to rotate the table, tilt the tubular retractor so you go contralateral and get an effective contralateral decompression. Um, if we look at the secondary fusion rates, so those patients who essentially failed and required a fusion operation, that number was almost 13% in, in the group that underwent open laminectomy versus 3.3% in the group that underwent a minimal invasive decompression. Overall reoperation uh, re rate was also higher in the open laminectomy group, and patient satisfaction was higher in the group that, under, un that underwent a minimal invasive uh, laminotomy or decompression. 
Now, uh, summarizing our results, uh, we showed that an MIS laminotomy or minimal invasive decompression with a unilateral approach uh, for bilateral decompression was associated with a lower secondary need for fusion in these patients. Uh, overall, the reoperation rate was significantly lower in these patients. There was less slip progression, and patient satisfaction was higher. Now, how does that really fit into the thinking of minimum invasive surgery? Uh, obviously, uh, you have to uh, select uh, the patients uh, very carefully that you uh, will do this operation on. So that is the, uh, the four T's of minimum invasive surgery, if you will. So target means the patient selection, the right operation for the right patient. Technology. Fortunately, um, with this operation, there's very limited technology really necessary. You need a tubular retractor or a specular retractor, uh, but you have to be able to use a drill. And if you look worldwide, a lot of surgeons are still not comfortable in spinal surgery really use a drill. So there's a lot of teaching that needs to be done. And finally, the idea of really uh, safely then performing a unilateral approach for bilateral decompression, the overtop decompression, is really one of the key surgical uh, 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 technical aspects of this operation. So thank you very much for your attention.